Hi, everybody. This one's actually coming from Reuters, so this should be actually a good story. Special report, Russian soldiers are quitting over Ukraine. This is coming from Moscow, Dunsk, by Maria uh, Sipkova. This is what it says. Some Russian soldiers are quitting the army because of the conflict in Ukraine. Several soldiers and human, uh, human rights activists told Reuters their accounts call into question the Kremlin's continued assertions that no Russian soldiers have been sent to Ukraine and that any Russians fighting alongside the rebels are there as volunteers only. Evidence for Russian fighting in Ukraine. Uh, Russian army equipment found in the country. Testimony for soldiers' families from Ukrainians uh, who say they were captured by Russian paratroopers is abundant. Uh, associates of Boris uh, Nemtsov, a prominent Kremlin critic, killed in February, will soon publish a report which they say will contain new evidence of the Russian military presence in Ukraine. Until now or recently, it's been extremely rare to find Russian soldiers who have fought there and are willing to talk. It's even rarer to find soldiers who have quit the army. Five soldiers who have recently quit, including two who said they left rather than, than serve in Ukraine, have told Reuters of their experience, experiences. One of the five from Moscow said he was sent on exercises in southern Russia last year, but ended up going into Ukraine as in an armored convoy. He said, uh, after we crossed the border, a lieutenant colonel said we could be sent to jail if we didn't fulfill orders. Some soldiers refused to stay there. The soldier who served with the uh, elite Russian, uh, sorry, I'm going to botch this, uh, Kantim Muravskaya Tank Division. He gave Reuters his full name and spoke on the condition of anonymity, saying he feared reprisals. He said he knew two soldiers who refused to stay. They were taken somewhere. The lieutenant colonel said criminal cases were opened against them, but in reality... We called them afterwards. They were at home. They just quit. So Russia is a little bit more soft than, than what they uh, claim, folks. So don't, don't be worried too much about either side of this. These guys are starting to wake up, too, and they're starting to realize this is all just bullshit. That's all it is. All right, so Vladimir Putin has repeatedly denied that Moscow has sent any military forces to help. Rebels in eastern Ukraine where clashes and casualties persist despite ceasefire struck in February. Putin's spokesmen have denied such allegations by NATO, Western governments, and Kiev. Officials say that any Russian soldiers fighting in Ukraine are volunteers helping the rebels on their own free will. All right, so the former Russian soldiers, he spoke to Reuters as well. Okay, we already did that. Okay, here we go. The former tank soldier from Moscow said he would not have gone to Ukraine voluntarily. No, for what? That's not our war. If our troops were officially there, it would be a different story. But the troops were not officially there. They were only sending certain units at certain times with certain strengths. He said he had been sent to fight in Ukraine last summer and returned to Russia in September when the first peace talks took place. His crew opera operated under a modernized Russian uh, T-72 B-3 tank, he said, and armored uh, tank unit or convoy or of. Back in Russia, he said, we were lined up and told 
that everyone would get a daily allowance, extras for fighting and medals, he said. But he said that they did not get the extras they expected. We decided to quit. There were 14 of us. The names of nine soldiers who quit the tank division are mentioned in an exchange of letters between uh, Victor Miskovitz, the head of the Human Resources Department of Russia's Western Military District, and Velatina uh, Melnikova, who runs the Alliance of Soldiers Mothers Commit uh, Committees, a group based in Moscow. Oh, their mothers want them home. That's so cute. Definitely not the Russia that I would be thinking of. Yes, I'm still on the World War II. If you drop a gun, or when the guy in front of you drops a gun, the guy in back picks it up. Yeah, that's the kind of rush I'm thinking of. Not like this. I, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be rude. I'm from at least part of that side of the world. I have no idea what it's like. I've never been there. In the letter seen by Reuters, human rights workers asked... Uh, Miskovitz to approve the soldiers' resignations, which one soldier told Reuters the military had been unwilling to do. The letters do not mention service in Ukraine. The soldiers left the service on December 12, according to the letter signed by Miskovitz. He and his deputy did not answer calls. Three soldiers from the list contacted Reuters, confirmed that he had quit the service but recently declined to discuss Ukraine. A spokesman from the Ministry of Defense declined to comment on soldiers quitting the tank unit being sent to Ukraine. Uh, let's see how big is this. Oh, God. Okay. So let me, let, me, let me just see this real quick. Here's the, what is this? It says financial incentives. So that's what they were given. Field conditions, what you can and cannot do, and what's going to happen. Spotted in Dunbus. Hang on. This is going to be a lot. Okay, I, I can I can go through the first part, at least. Yeah. Since it mentioned their financial incentives, I'll read what they were promised. In Russia, all men age 18 to 27 have to serve 12 months in the military. Bah. These conscripts cannot be sent abroad, but according to human rights activists, military officials have been promising conscripts financial incentives to sign contracts and make them professional soldiers. The officials then push soldiers into going to Ukraine. Sergei uh, Krivimko, head of the rights group Citizen Army Rights, a member of Human Rights Council created by the Kremlin has dealt with soldiers' rights since the early 2000s. He said military commanders are trying to find more people who will go to Ukraine voluntarily. But this is still volunteers, in quotations, in quotation marks, because there is harsh pressure. Uh, Krivenko said commanders take a carrot and stick approach. They offer large financial rewards to contact soldiers willing to go to Ukraine. If soldiers refuse, they're told to resign. He said, you can't criminally prosecute someone for not following orders because the order itself doesn't exist on paper. It's only oral. That's right. Hear that? The order itself does not exist on paper, it's only oral. Since 2012, contract soldiers' pay has risen. Grivenko traveled to uh, Murmansk to meet soldiers, about 30 of whom uh, told him they were been to Ukraine. Now they've received 20, 30, and 40,000 rubles a month, depending on their rank. Some even 60,000 a month. All right. Uh, the average wage in Russia, about 30 rubles or $580 for being in the military a month. I don't know. That might not be so bad, especially if it's like U.S. where you really don't have to pay anything.
or like taxes and stuff. Resignation is not an easy decision for the soldiers. Just like others in Russia, they're paying off apartments, foreign-made cars. The question becomes, where do they find the money to pay off debts to feed their families? All right. Da -da -da -da. Da -da -da. Let's see. What is field conditions? Yeah, I'm going to read field conditions, and I'm not going to read the other one. Field conditions. Another soldier who said he quit the army over the Ukraine conflict is a 21-year-old who was a member of the Grad Missile Unit. Soldiers who asked that he and his unit not be identified told Reuters that the summer of 2014, his team took up position two kilometers, one mile, from Ukrainian border in the Rostov region of southwest Russia. The operation appeared to be an exercise, though the men were ordered to prepare as if it were for real combat. Hey, what does this sound like? We drove there without insignia. We took off our buttonholes and stripes. We were told that we did not need them for the field conditions. In early September, the men were ordered to fire their rockets at a target about 17 kilometers, maybe less. It was possible the target was Ukrainian, he said. I was hoping I did not aim at any people, or at least that I missed the target. He said his fellow soldiers told him another battery from a unit had crossed the border and spent 10 days in Ukraine. I did not understand who was fighting and what for, and the point of it, he said. While on leave in January, the soldier said he was unexpectedly summoned back to his unit. We were moved to another unit, another artillery battery, that were supposed to go to some exercise in Rostov region. They were there for they said they were really big exercises and very big forces were involved, Silger said. Although he offered no proof, he said he had no doubt it was related conflict in Ukraine. Of course it was. Why else would we be called off from vacation? He and four of others decided to quit the army rather than risk being sent to fight in Ukraine. Another complete completing the necessary procedures they left in March, according to their soldiers' account and documents from human rights activists and military prosecutors. Now, you guys can read this. Like I said, there's always the URL up here. So, this is what this is about. Um, as it seems, all the hissy fit Russia stuff is kind of drummed down a little bit, um, as you can see, obviously. Uh, soldiers can leave. They're not executed in the streets. You know, if, if the war isn't just, if people are playing games, it's not safe to be there. If you don't believe in it, you don't believe in it. doesn't matter if it's Ukraine, if it's Afghanistan. If you're going to go be sent somewhere where there is no official trouble. Do you listen to your commanders and take the 550 or 580 a month and get killed for no reason? Or don't you? Well, it's up to you.